Hello YouTube, it's Ben here from Team America 1, coming at you with a kind of a series that I will be doing throughout this next week. Uh, I have currently five decks that I can show you guys, so pretty much I was thinking why not just uh, show you each, or a deck, like maybe once every day, once every two days, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so, you can see here. These are the four decks that I have present on the table. The fifth deck is actually taken apart right now, so I'd have to put it back together. But I have Nordics, Consulars, which actually I'm, I was planning on doing an updated version of this. Uh, Ice Barriers and Gladiator Beasts. Now, I know I already posted Ice Barriers. Somewhat has changed. Um, Glad Beasts, this is Levi's build, but I'm meddling with it right now. Uh, and then Nordics. So, the fifth deck I have is Windups. So, again, everything is not really super meta except for the concerts, I guess. I apologize for that. But, um, anyways, today I was planning on doing the concert deck profile. So, you can just move these aside. And, hopefully... This hopefully you guys like this. I don't know. I've just been trying to create some fun decks, uh, as well as my competitive deck. So I'm sorry for this. My nose is running for some reason. But anyways, let's just get right into the deck profile. And so you're gonna have your standard lineup with your three Pollocks, your three Chaos, your three Algai, and your three Sombras. Um, all these are standard. I still don't play Sheraton. I would if I had one. I actually don't have any copies of this card, so... Uh, otherwise I would play one Sheraton, maybe two. Uh, just because consistency sometimes is a problem. So, yeah. So that's it for your concert monsters. I still run the one bear. I know the one deck that topped that ARD circuit didn't, but overall I really didn't like his build. Personal preference, I guess. Um, and then we want Thunder King, and Thunder King is still really good, so, yeah. Uh, and the Hand Traps, the Double Veiler, might drop this down to one, I'm not sure yet. I haven't been basing a lot of Prophecy, so, I don't know. Your Double Maxi, Maxi is, like, so good at two. Um, you really wouldn't play three. I might bump it up to three, though, if I take out one Veiler, so it could possibly be three Maxi. Um, yeah. And then, you're one honest, because honest wins games, and it makes people so salty, and it's pretty funny. Uh, people who take the game that seriously, I think, just need to cool down a bit. But, oh well. Uh, but that's it for the monsters, 19, I think. Um, then for the spells, your Dark Hole, Book of Moon, Reinforcements of the Army. So these are all kind of st standard, I guess. Um, with along with Rota, you play two tanky. Tanky searches out your bear and your cows. Rota searches out your Pollux. And then I run triple MST. MST can just get rid of problem macro, and it honestly can win you the dragon game if you hit either return or you stop a dragon Fabine. So, like again, MST is not bad against dragons whatsoever. So, also setting it for a bluff and they MST it is also pretty nice. So, on to the traps. You have your one of your solemn warning. Warning is still really good. Um, torrential tribute. Torrential tribute is still really good, especially with Omega. Uh, one call, call on it, can single handedly win you the game late game. Because you can flip it, bring back your Sombras, and then go off from there. So, uh, one Bottomless, and then one Compulse, because all these cards are still good. Uh, Double Mirror Force is great. It's an out to Master Blades. Like I've said before in a lot of previous videos, out to Master Blades, and that is crucial, because if they go to Master Blades, and you can't like get over it, you lose. Um... Dimensional Fissure, this is for Stardust and Draco Sack. Um, 
And then any other rogue deck, because I think Dimensional Fissure can punish any, pretty much every rogue deck. Um, but it is one of those cards where sometimes I wish it was maybe like, um, just like a duality or Sombras or something, or not Sombras, a Sheraton, just because consistency factor is a thing. Uh, two Venus Chain, I only run two, just because I run the two Valor. If I did drop one Valor, I might bump this up to three, but I'm not sure. Um, the reason why I like Valor and Venus Chain, Venus Chain I use mostly to stop the attacks, but um, mo I do use it to stop the effects, but I like to use Effect Valor for that and keep like my back row like, set so they don't know what it is. And finishing can be pretty punishing, and you can abuse this card as well as Call of the Haunted with uh, Pleiades. If they're just dead on your field, you can bounce it, and then you have another pretty much Monster Reborn and a finishing to be used again. And then, well, what am I doing? Uh, two Vanities Emptiness to top it off. This card is so good. Wait. This card can single-handedly win you the Dragon Match Game 1 which is something this deck struggles with. Game 1 usually is long and you don't usually win. To say the least, like, Game 1 against Dragons is tough. And really you have to fight Game 2 and 3 to with your side deck um, to be able to push over Dragons. But Vanity's Emptiness in the main board gives you that like main deck out to almost any situation. So if there's a point in the game where you know they have a lot of Dragons you have this set, um, and you make your push, and you have a decent sized board, but you know that they can get over it by going big eye, Draco sack, blah blah blah, star eater attack. Um, you can just flip this card, like flip this card, and they lose. Unless they have an out, which most of the time they don't. Um, especially if they're trying to make their push, you can just flip this card, and it's game over, like, you win, and that's what I love about this, um, the fact that you can get around its destruction effect with Pleiades by bouncing it is also really good, uh, so Vanity's Emptiness and Counselors is amazing, so, now on to the extra deck, why not, um, for your fours, Photon Poplar Operative, I put this guy back in there over Levier, but I'm not sure, um, one Gaga got Cowboy, again, burn for game, I actually did that today, so, pretty nice. Uh, best Dweller for your Mermail matchup, and um, Dragons, sometimes. Uh, my Stroke, I think this is one of the staple rank fours now, even though I usually never make him. And one Prey SP, this card gets over Master Blades as well, this card's really good. Um, Star Leash, again, this card's probably one of the best cards in the extra deck. Um, one black ship, I don't like this card at all whatsoever, but I need a Diamond Dyer to replace it, so that's why I'm playing this right now, but Diamond Dyer will replace this card. Uh, double Omega. Uh, a lot of people say Omega at 2 is bad, I don't agree with that necessarily. Um, I think Omega is just a really safe play, if you don't know what they're playing. Um... Not saying Pleiades is like necessarily bad, but if you can't make Pleiades, Omega is your go-to exceed. And there's a lot of times where if you can't make Pleiades and you're stuck, like Omega is the safest play to go into as a concert player. Like I wouldn't want to go into like a My Stroke or like a Photon Butterfly or Gaga -ga Cowboy just like just because that's all I could make. Um, so again, Omega really good. Uh, one Volcasaurus, this card pops and then you win because you overlay with this guy. Your one Gaia Charger, and Gaia Charger is so good in this deck. So, piercing over the tokens is so good. And um, then, I run three Pleiades. Almost every, like, I don't know how to, like, describe it. Like, every, like, quote unquote, good player. Um, we'll say that three Pleiades is too much, and I don't agree at all. Like, 
I think this. Sorry, my phone's going nuts right now. Um, I think three is unnecessary, just in case you will come into the scenarios and you will lose because of it. I've done it before, but you will need this third Pleiades late game, and you won't have it, and you'll have exhausted your other outs, so then you can't like make the push that you need to get over. And there was the one time when I did only play two, and I went into tournament. I did fine, but my second game, no, my third game, because I was 1-1 and I needed a win. And then game three, and this sounds like a terrible, like a perfect scenario, but it was against Dragons and I needed my third Pleiades that I had taken out. And I lost because I couldn't go into this. Uh, at this time I was playing Tyrus. I would already used Tyrus, like, I don't know why, but, yeah, I don't know, but... Pleiades, you, I think you really need to play three. I know you can recycle the card, but like at those times where you don't have your sombras or like something happens, like it gets bottomless or something, that third Pleiades is so key. And then uh, your one Ptolemy M7, because it's at one, but I really don't care. And then on to the side deck. Um, side deck is, again, <laughs> I was watching uh, Jamie the Kid, and I agree, the side decks are really like pointed and based towards your player preference, so, <coughs> and locals, but I'm still going to do it for you. So, double deck lockdown, this is for mermails, or mermails and sometimes dragons if I feel like setting them in, but I don't think they're that effective against dragons, but, yeah, zombie world, zombie world's good, it, I actually side this in almost every game. I know you might think that's strange, but I do because uh, Rivalry of Warlords is a thing. So this card can help me get over that as well as your back row. So, like back row removal. So Zombie World, um, Unsung Hero of the deck. Your one DeFi, your one macro, and your one Soul Drain. All very crucial cards in certain matchups. These two mostly in Mermails. Uh, people side this in dragons against dragons. I don't know why. I guess because they lose advantage. But and then soul drain is good against mermaids. Good against dark worlds. A lot of things. Uh, and one imperial iron wall. I would play two if I had two, but I don't have two. So, uh, but the one we'll do right now, and you guys all know what this is for dragons. Uh, chain disappearance, prophecy, and agents especially like really good. Uh, actually, hitting their Shine Ball is so good against Agents. Hitting their Earth is so good. And Rogue Decks as well, but hitting the Blue Boy is probably the most satisfying thing. Like, set this, they act, they summon their Blue Boy and chain this France, and then they just go Scoop Phase from down on out because they just lost their play. Uh, double goes a match. Again, this card's really good. Double Mind Crush, this card's really good. And then Dust Tornado. And Dust Tornado, usually I haven't been setting back row removal in this deck. And I'm finally starting to do so because people, and my explanation may not be a good one, but um, at my locals, a lot of people don't side for counselors. And I took advantage of that for the longest time, which is why um, you saw so many like first place deck profiles or top four or top eight uh, at locals is because nobody sided for my deck. So a lot of the times I would be going into game two after a game one win and they wouldn't side anything while I sided for them. So I think that's good, like really good. But now people have been like, oh, consoles are a deck and there's that one kid that plays them. So I'm going to start siding rivalry and it's kind of annoying. Um, so there haven't I haven't been I yeah I haven't been topping as much um, because of it. Now that may seem like I'm a bad player. I can only top when people don't side, but uh, also I haven't been playing as much. That's another reason. But it's like the last the last tournament I went was I went three two. So and I ended up getting ninth out of eight. So that was kind of annoying, like, I was kind of mad about that, but, anyways, I thought I did good, my only losses were two dragons, and one strange deck, 
and this was before I had emptiness, so I actually haven't played a tournament with emptiness before, so I have on DN and Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, but yeah, it does turn it out. Great side card. Um, but yeah, so that's it for the deck profile. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, the last thing I really wanted to do was show off some like tokens I made, and I know they're not the best quality, but like, there's your standard Joey's World token. Shoot, I did not mean to do that. Um, and then I kind of I just made these like Mecha Phantom Beast theme tokens. I don't know if you can tell, but they're like pretty bad quality. Like I don't know, but I think they look good. That's why I have them, I guess. But this one's bad. I don't like this one. These are my favorite, the Harlier ones, and like. All of them are solid, but they're one piece, but, like, I don't know. I need to find a more efficient way of making them, but, yeah, these are the tokens. I need to make one more. I can't find a fourth earlier for some strange reason, so, uh, but, yeah, so. Uh, also, I will be trying to do an opening for you guys soon, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to, like I said, don't forget to comment and subscribe. Sorry it went kind of long. Um... A lot of my deck profiles do that because I do like to actually describe my deck, um, which I know, yeah. Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.